everyone and welcome back to our latest edition from Football Collectibles South Coast. Now today we've got something a little bit different. Uh, we're not going to be reviewing any products or anything like that or any openings. Um, what we're going to be doing is the Jamie Carragher 1-11 to Challenge. Uh, this recently, uh, I think it was on the football show on Sky Sports News that they've been doing daily. Um, he decided to sort of set a challenge of people to produce their 1-11 to from players in their lifetime. There were some stipulations in that, that you could only have one player from each nationality and one player from any one team. Um, so, you know, for example, you couldn't choose uh, Van Dijk and Mane. Um, and similarly, you couldn't choose sort of Harry Kane and Sterling because they're both English. Uh, and obviously Mane and Van Dijk are both from Liverpool. So, what we're going to be doing is going through my 1-11 to that I've chosen. I'm using the Match Tax 101 uh, cards for this. Um, I've kind of gone with a, a current 1-11 to with some older players in there. Um, so I'll leave a description down. I'll leave a link in the description for the Match Tax website so you can check out their uh, current products from 101, Match Tax Extra, things like that. Feel free to check that out. Before we get into the team, as always, hit that like button. It really helps out our channel. And hit that subscribe button if you want to know uh, when we drop our latest videos and make sure your notification bell is turned on so you get notified when we do drop our videos. So let's get into this. We will start with our goalkeeper. So our goalkeeper is currently uh, Jan Oblak, I've gone for. So he's currently from Atletico Madrid um, and he is Slovenian. So he, this season is probably one of the best goalkeepers around. Um, 37 appearances in all competitions uh, for Atletico Madrid. He's kept clean 16 clean sheets in that in those 37 appearances. So that's very good stats. Um, again, one of the best goalkeepers. He's only 27, so he's got a few more years, not in his prime yet. So it'll be interesting to see whether he remains at Atletico um, over the next couple of years. His contract's due to expire in 2023. So I'm sure Atletico are probably looking at that already to try and keep him. Um, so yeah, that's where we've gone for a goalkeeper. Next, we'll go to our left back. Uh, so our left back, we've gone for David Alaba. So he is Austrian and he's from Bayern Munich. So again, Alaba, you know, well-established, world-class left back. Uh, he's 27, again, same as Oblak. Um, this season... 32 appearances across all competitions. He's got two goals. His, his contract's due to expire in next June, so June 2021. So it'll be interesting to see whether or not Bayern are looking to you know, tie him down for the rest of his career really at Bayern or whether he's looking potentially for a move elsewhere. Currently valued at 46 million. I would say he would probably go for a lot more than that or depending on how the sort of transfer market runs this summer and into January, potentially would maybe go for cheaper. Um, again, obviously, I know the clubs have been hit quite a lot with, with what's happened recently, so it'd be interesting to see how that pans out. He's He's got 457 appearances across his career so far, uh, and he's scored 40 goals, so that's quite high goals for a left-back. Uh, so yeah, I couldn't really leave him out as a left back. I think he's one of the one of the world's best left backs. Uh, so he's in there as well. So let's move on to centre back. We've gone for Kalidou Koulibaly as one of our centre backs. So Koulibaly currently at Napoli. He is Senegalese as well. Um, this season, twenty one appearances. This season um, for Napoli again, absolutely solid. Solid centre back, uh, world world class centre back. Um, couldn't really leave him out um, from the centre backs. Really looking at it um, again. He's only he's probably coming into his prime. He's twenty eight. Um, so centre backs, you know, you look at the likes of John Terry, um, people like that. They hit their prime sort of late twenties, early thirties. So he's got a good couple of years ahead of him, um, and it'd be interesting to see whether or not he remains at Napoli. Um, currently valued at 50 million. There are rumours um, of Liverpool are quite keen to sign him um, and the pairing of him and Van Dijk as central defenders would probably be one of the most formidable centre-back pairings uh, around. 
So that'll be interesting to see where that happens. His contract's not due to expire until 2023. So potentially if they were to sign him either this summer, January or the next summer, they're probably going to have to pay uh, over the odds of the 50 million. I would say probably more towards the 100 million. But again, that will depend on how the sort of transfers go in the next couple of windows, really. Um, with that in mind, I have paired him with uh, Van Dijk in defence. Again, couldn't really leave Van Dijk out at the minute, the form he is in. Um, you know, Liverpool player, he's, he's, he's Dutch as well, just to sort of um, put in those stipulations there about the Dream Team. So we haven't used any other players from those. Um, 378 career appearances, he's 28 years old, 41 goals from all the teams he's played for. Uh, this season, 29 appearances for Liverpool with four goals scored. Um, obviously, he was a big big buy for Liverpool. They was leaking goals. Um, and I think him being at the heart of their defence is a big reason why they're so so far out in front in the in the Premier League at the minute. And again, very, very hard for I think any team, sort of dream team one to eleven for him to be left out um currently. Um he's valued at seventy two million, but obviously that was when you know, he moved from um, Southampton to Liverpool. He's probably over a hundred million. If he were to go anywhere, he would be one of those players that would still demand that big money, big money move. Um, if he were to go anywhere, but I don't see that happening anytime soon. So moving on to my right back position, uh, this is my first sort of older player um, in Sergio Ramos. Um, so he's from, from Spain, and he plays for Real Madrid. Now. Obviously, Ramos creates a lot of controversy. Some people love him, some people hate him, but I don't think you can really say that he's not a very good player. He's 34 years old, so he's coming towards the end of his career. Probably only got another season, maybe two, at Real. And it'll be interesting to sort of see where he does go after that. Um, I know a lot of the, the sort of La Liga players are heading out to China and places like that. So it'll be interesting to see. Would like to see him in the Premier League, but... You know, uh, it's going to be down to him. So he moved to Real in uh, 05, 06. So he's been there for a long time. He moved there from Sevilla. He's got 685 appearances across all sort of teams. So Sevilla and Madrid and sort of all the games, uh, Champions League and everything like that. He scored 94 goals. That's quite quite good for a, a left uh, for a right back. Now this stat is his about his sort of um, bookings and things like that. So 219 career yellow cards, 18 uh, sort of second bookable offences, and then obviously a red card. Um, and he's only got eight straight red cards. I was quite surprised at that stat. I thought there'd be a lot more straight red cards considering his reputation. Uh, his contract is due to expire, expire in 2021. Um, so again, I'm interested to see whether Real you know, extend him for another year or they let that run out and he moves elsewhere. So it'd be interesting to sort of keep keep an eye on that one. Okay, we move on to midfield. Um, so my, my formation for this is going to be 4-3-3. Three, three. Um, so my first one is going to be uh, Kai Havertz. So Kai Havertz, he, he's German and he's currently at Bayer Leverkusen. Um, he's only 20 years old as well, so young, youngest player so far in the team. Um, again, up, up and coming, really young talent in the Bundesliga, as there are a lot of players. Um, 38 appearances this season with 15 goals. He's been involved in 29% of all Bayer Leverkusen's goals. So that's quite, quite a high rating. He's also got five assists. Um, direct assists to sort of goals. So the 29% he's been involved in in some way, um, but five assists as well is, is, is quite high. Uh, his current contract with them uh, at Leverkusen is due to expire in 2022. So it'll be interesting to see again whether he stays there or there is rumours of um, Munich looking at, looking at him, uh, as well as obviously the big clubs from around Europe, uh, Premier League, La Liga, um, Syria and uh, Liga 1. So it'll be interesting to see where, whether or not he stays at Leverkusen or whether he looks to sort of secure that big money move. Um, so yeah, as a, as a sort of young player that I wanted to put into the team, again, um, not many others around really that are sort of getting the, the sort of credit that he's getting currently. 
Um, next, we have Angolo Kante. Uh, so he's French and he's currently playing at Chelsea. Um, again, you know, world class um, midfielder, defensive midfielder. You know, he's a World Cup winner uh, with France. This season, 29 appearances for Chelsea, three goals. You know, he's a two time Premier League champion with Leicester and with Chelsea. Um, and, and, and again, world world class defensive midfielder. Um, and in in my formation, you know, I've got attacking wing backs. I've got two attacking sort of midfielders. So I'm, and I need I, I would need that sort of holding defensive midfielder. Um, so no one really better than um, Kante in there. Um, so we will move on to our other uh, midfielder. Now I've gone for Ziyech. Now, obviously, in this series, he's, he is with uh, Ajax. I know he's going to be with Chelsea. So I've kind of, again, you know, maybe flouting the rules of this 1-11. Uh, to 11, But he's not played for Chelsea yet, so I thought I would use him. Um, so Ziyech, um, with, like I say, uh, Ajax currently, but he is moving to Chelsea. Um, he's... Signed for Chelsea for thirty six million. Now I believe that's quite cheap from the, the the sort of what I've seen of him play. I think they've got a bit of a bargain there. Thirty five appearances this season for Ajax with six goals and thirteen assists. Now that's a lot of assists. Um, so you know Chelsea will be looking for him, um, especially in their midfield, uh, potentially to provide a lot of assists. So I think they've got a bit of a bargain there. And again. You know, he's 27, so he's coming into his prime. Um, and, you know, potentially the only, the only time they're going to maybe fall down with that is if he's, he's Moroccan. Um, so, you know, Africa Cup of Nations, potentially, um, they may lose out on him for a few weeks and things like that. Uh, but, you know, I believe they've got themselves a bit of a bargain there. So now we move on to the sort of attacking uh, front three that I've gone for. Uh, we'll, do, we'll just move these down a little bit. So I've got space. So my attacking front three, we start off with Raheem Sterling. Uh, so Man City and from England. So again, you can't really leave him out, I don't believe at the minute. Top attacking uh, forward. 39 appearances across all formats this year with 20 goals. He's currently valued at 115 million. You know, he's only 25. Moved from Liverpool for 57 million in 2015. And probably if you were going to look to buy him, you're probably looking at more than 150 million, I, I would say. Um, and obviously, Tops have rated him as one of the, the sort of top 10 players in, in, in the Match Attacks 101 series this season. He's got 100 for attack. Um, so, you know, he, he is highly rated around the world. Um, and again, I couldn't really leave him out. Um, also, I've gone for a, a sort of another attacking. Uh, forward, uh, they're just going to play behind the striker. So I've gone for Messi. Now again, Messi is world class. I don't really need to say much about Messi. I will read out some of his stats. So 22 games this season, 19 goals, 12 assists, uh, involved in 49% of all Barcelona's goals this year. So that is mega high stats. He's world class. You know, there's nothing else to say really. Um, career appearances: 718 appearances, 672 goals in that 718 appearances. So it's almost, you know, it's not far off a goal a game. Uh, it's ridiculous. You know, he is a ridiculous player. Um, but there, there you go. That That is Messi. Um, Argentinian, um, you know, he is 32. So he's, again, people are saying he's, he's, he's in his, he's hit his prime and he's potentially going over that now. He is still in his prime as far as I'm concerned. He's still absolutely world-class. Um, Valued at 100 million, I'd probably say he's never going to go anywhere other than Barcelona, unfortunately. Would have been nice to see him in the Premier League, but there you go. Um, he's not going to go anywhere. Um, so those those two attacking sort of forwards are going to sit just behind my main striker. Um, and again, I've gone for Haaland uh, in this one. So Haaland is uh, Norwegian, um, played currently at Dortmund, obviously he moved to Dortmund in the uh, 1920 January transfer window um, for 18 million. 
No, I think that's a massive bargain. And the, the form he's been in since his move, he's, got, he's been in about, uh, 11 games, 10 goals. And that's just in the Bundesliga uh, since his move. Uh, and this season alone, uh, from uh, before he moved you know, to when he has now in Dortmund, 36 games, 41 goals uh, between Salzburg and Dortmund. That's something that's, you know, again, over over a goal a game is unbelievable. And he's only 19. So this guy is only going to get better uh, and better and better and better and better. Um, so big things coming for this player. Um, so, yeah, you know, currently valued. So he's, he, he moved in January for 18 million. His value currently uh, is around about 64 million. Again, he's not going to go anywhere anytime soon unless there is a big money sort of come in for him. You're looking at over 150 million, I would say, to get him out uh, in this climate. Again, it's going to be difficult. So, um, so yeah, so that is my 1-11. to So we'll quickly go over it again. Uh, so we had Oblak in goal, Alaba as our left-back, Kulabali as one of our centre-backs, Van Dijk as our other centre-back, Ramos as our right-back, Kai Havertz in midfield, Angolo Kante as our sort of defensive holding midfielder. Uh, Hakim Ziyech as another sort of attacking midfielder. Sterling and Messi just sitting behind uh, our main sort of striker in Erling Haaland. So that is my Carragher's challenge of 1-11. to um, So let us know, guys, in comments what you think of the team. You know, drop us your teams, 1-11s, to that, that'd be interesting to see other people's teams. Uh, and yeah, we'll be we're back with some more Match Attacks products over the next coming weeks. Um, so as always, like I said before, hit that like button, subscribe to our channel so you know, uh, and hit the notification button so you know when we drop our next content. Until the next one, cheers.